Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and Happy New Year! Today I will be doing a plan with me and my Erin Condren Vertical Life Planner. Um, today will be a bit different though, just because I usually plan academic things in this planner. Um, and this week I actually took fully off from work. So I'll just be laying down some stickers. It's purely decorative, um, but doesn't serve any function. And I thought I would do so while kind of discussing my goals for 2023. I've been watching a lot of um, YouTube videos recently um, on YouTube, uh, just around, there's been like a lot of vlogmas or planmas going on. Um, so I've been able to kind of keep up every day and watch a couple videos of other planner channels um, and a lot of content lately has been around goals for 2023 um, so I thought I would kind of make a similar video um, I'm not gonna have very specific goals though um, there's some reasons for it so uh, one being that um, I find it very hard to have yearly goals one because it's arbitrary um especially for me it's like a different the school year is on a different timeline so it feels very arbitrary to have goals the second being also just like i've come to recognize that there is a lot of a lot that can impede with goals that you can't realistically control um so looking at like overall categories of goals there is so little that i myself um and maybe you as well have control over so it becomes really hard when setting goals because by the end of the year i feel like i've accomplished nothing in a sense um I find it easier for me to set really specific goals for like short timeline um, or like when it comes to work, but when it comes to the end of the year, it becomes really hard for me to, um, set specific goals when it's things I don't have a lot of control over. Um, especially because, you know, I saw over the last year I was really sick and of course then that impacted all areas of my life. Um, and you know, I'm still, even though I'm like managing my symptoms, um, I still have, it's a chronic illness, so it's still with me, and it's possible for me to have future flare-ups, um, so I think I want to be more mindful of that, um, I think I was taking it really hard when I was really sick by not being able to accomplish anything and just prioritizing my health, um, and so I think I want to be a little bit better going into this year and mindful of, like, things may not work out. So I think instead of having specific goals, I might just have um, some intentions I want for 2023. Some hopes, some intentions, um, and I'll also talk about my word of the year. So before I get kind of into laying down the place, I just wanted to show what I'm using. Um, so I'm using these stickers from the Prairie Planner. So if you didn't already know, I actually PR for the Prairie Planner and you can use Ashley 20 for 20% 20 off your order. Um, as I said, I plan to kind of take this week off. So I didn't order a full kit. I just ordered some box stickers and glitter headers as well as the leopard bougie boxes just to kind of help lay down a base for me to decorate. Um, and, you know, as I said, I won't be actually putting anything in this planner just because I took it off work. Okay, so kind of, I guess, one of my tensions of the year is firstly around health. Um, so again, I didn't want to set really any goals around this because health, having a chronic illness, health is so uncontrollable. Um, like, I cannot realistically control how my health is going to go and how I'm going to feel. These are huge. Um, so there are some things I do want to improve overall, especially coming out of a long flare up. Um, so it was about a year and a half, maybe two years I was sick. Um, so it was quite a while. Um, of course, not all of it was its worst and not, you know, um, not functional, but uh, it was a long time to go through um, some pretty debilitating symptoms. So I guess the first thing with health is just moving my body. Um, 
there was a point like I became very malnourished and weak oftentimes and it would be hard just to move my body um, and so that is something I really want to be intentional about in the new year is making sure to kind of move my body um, just to get kind of blood flowing. I'm not setting any, you know, weight loss goals or movement goals. Um, it's really just about moving my body. You know, I recently saw a podcast or listened to a podcast which talked about kind of goal setting and how sometimes we fail goals because it kind of trying to break everything down and schedule everything takes kind of the fun out of it. It makes it really kind of feel like a chore. Essentially, I kind of want to move my body just so I can kind of get blood flowing, focus on my health, but I'm not setting any specific goals around, you know, losing weight, around working out, um, just because I have no idea how this next year is going to go. Um, and, you know, having this attention of moving my body, I think I can hold with me throughout the year and think about how to best incorporate it with how it's going on when I can. Um, I think this year is all about flexibility and really listening to my body and what it needs. The framework I want to go into this year with, I think, is just around experimenting with food. Um, so as I said, I was kind of suffering with symptoms for a long time. Um, I was suffering with debilitating nausea for a year and a half and that completely changed my diet. Um, it became, you know, really hard to eat a lot of foods. And I think even though I'm feeling better, I'm still scared to eat a lot of foods. Um, especially like a lot of more healthy, nutritious foods, just because, um, it would often make me sick. I'd eat more plain foods. Um, so this year I just think I want to be more mindful. What am I doing? I need to add full boxes. So this year I would just want to be a little bit more mindful about, um, trying new foods, experimenting with new foods, as well as experimenting with cooking new foods as well. Um, so I hate cooking. I've always hated cooking. Um, mostly I think just because I'm not great at it. Um, so it becomes hard to want to cook when I feel like I'm not good at it. And so I think I'm gonna try um, to be better about allowing myself to kind of experiment with cooking and trying new things. And hopefully that'll give me kind of permission to fail at cooking um, and make mistakes. I think really my goal in all of this when it comes to health is listening to my body. I think to best do that, as I said, is really to figure out, like, to move my body and to experiment with foods, um, but do so with the intention of doing what's best for my body in that moment. And so next up is around work. Um, so 2022 is the year of burnout. So after being sick um, for a very long time, I came out of the year with burnout just because I was trying to pushing myself through the sickness with school and then trying to get caught up with school and then just burning out. And so this year then is really, I think about, and this comes to my word of the year is rest. Um, so I want to make sure I incorporate more rest in my, um, life. I also want to be more mindful of the rest I'm taking. So for me, this might look like learning to listen to my body when it needs rest, as well as learning to incorporate rest that actually is restful. And that probably sounds a little confusing. Um, but what I mean by that is something I've learned this year is and I think partly why I burned out was I was only resting when I was sick and I wasn't actually resting to kind of like reserve, um, kind of, I guess, reserve my energy in a sense. Um, so I was just doing it when it was absolutely essential, but then I completely burned out because I actually never planned time for rest for things that would actually kind of rejuvenate me. So I want to be a little bit more mindful of actually planning and rest when I need it 
and being compassionate with myself when I need it, as well as um, doing fun things and actually taking time off to rest up. And so that's kind of the why I picked that part of the year. With work though, I want to make sure I'm, uh, essentially what I've kind of thought through is I want to make sure I'm doing the hard things. And again, this seems like really kind of abstract, but I think for me with grad school is that we have like a million demands going on. Um, and it's very easy, especially for me, to get down into the nitty gritty and all the details, but then neglect the really big hard things. And for me, that's research. And so I think I want to be more mindful going into this year of doing those hard things. So this might look like spending less time on the smaller things, not worrying about perfectionism when it comes to the smaller things, just getting those over with, um, as well as really scheduling goals around, you know, the hard things. And actually for this category, I do have a specific goal, and that is for this semester to finish my qualifying exam. And so the qualifying exam is essentially as a PhD student, even though I've been accepted in the program, I've started the program, I have to kind of prove that I deserve to be there. I have the skills, the critical thinking skills to be there. Um, so it's an exam you have to take usually within the beginning of your program. Um, so for me, even though it's called an exam, though it's not really an exam, like you are assessed on certain skills. Um, but it's not like it's a multiple choice exam. Instead, um, I have to come up with a theory in psychology. Um, so it's quite mentally taxing, um, you know, and it's it can be hard for me to just sit down and do it um, and work on it. Uh, so I think especially with, as I said, all the other things going on, it's easy for those things to take up all my time. So really kind of going into this year, I want to make sure I'm setting time aside to do the hard things and specifically that is the qualifying exam in the first part of the year. And I think why I'm okay with setting that as a specific goal um, is because it's immediate and right here. When I set yearly goals, it's so hard for me to imagine what the year is going to look like because so many things change, you know. I'm usually good about a semester-to-semester -semester basis, what my semester will look like, but I have no idea what my future semesters are going to look like. If I'm going to be in certain courses, if I'm going to be teaching, if I'm going to be working on the side. And so knowing what this semester looks like right now, I feel like it's achievable. It's going to be hard, but I feel like it is achievable to finish my qualifying exam this semester. And so going into this year, I'm going to be making sure to prioritize that while still being mindful of when I need rest. Next up, um, we have finances. And so again, my intentions are to be really mindful of finances, but I'm not sending any specific saving, spending goals because I, uh, I am also getting married this year. And so I'm really looking forward to the wedding, um, but I feel like it's really unrealistic for me to say I'm gonna s like s save right now or not buy anything because I have the wedding coming up. Um, and because of that then, um, I just wanna be mindful of my spending habits, knowing that we have the wedding coming up but not actually setting any goals. Um, I'm pretty good, I guess, about reflecting in the moment when it comes to spending. So I'm pretty good about kind of knowing when I need to step it back on a month to month basis, like being updated with my finances and not going too over. Um, so I think as long as I'm just, you know, continuing to be mindful of that and watching things, then things will hopefully be okay. Um, but yeah, I feel like as of now, it's just unrealistic for me to expect um, to expect any kind of uh, goals when it comes to saving. 
And so, um, with wedding though, I think I also want to kind of add the attention of I want to also make sure I enjoy the process of wedding planning. Um, I don't want to set any specific goals, again, because one, it, it's not like something I can achieve a wedding. Um, like I either have the wedding or I don't have the wedding. And if I don't have the wedding, it's probably something out of my control, like COVID. Um, so it feels weird for me to set goals around wedding, but I think I just want to make sure I'm enjoying the process of wedding planning. Um, so as where we stand, we have all the kind of big things done. So we have the venue booked, um, trip booked. We're finishing up, like we've already sent out the save the dates and invites and stuff. Um, and we just really right now have to confirm who's coming um but now it's going to be down to all the small details so it's thinking about my nails and makeup um and what clothes i want for the trip if you didn't know we're doing a destination wedding um so it's just like getting into those details and i feel like for me it's very easy to get lost in the details um and you know the whole thing with the destination wedding was it was supposed to be not focused on the actual wedding ceremony and reception itself but spending time with friends and family and so i think i want to be mindful of that that you know the purpose isn't to really get caught in the details and worrying about having the perfect wedding it's instead thinking about you know family and friends i think especially you know just i really enjoyed so far just setting time aside to plan the wedding with my partner um, and so make sure I continue to do that when it comes to the small details. With finances, I should have put this here, it just kind of popped in my head, I was thinking about it earlier, is um, when it comes to finances too and spending, I think I want to be really mindful about using what I have. Um, so this last year, so 2022, you know, I was great about using up my kits just because I tended to hoard kits. And then I was always like a year behind on planning. So I was great about using them up and I've used pretty much all of them except for kits that are very specific, one being like for the wedding. Um, and so knowing that, um, I think I wanna be also mindful about my other craft supplies, you know? So I have lots of washi. Um, I also have lots of just like deco stickers that I bought like years ago. Like when I first started planning and was figuring out my style. Um, so I think I want to be more mindful about using what I have instead of just buying things, even if it means not having it not looking the best it theoretically could. Um, so even if things don't perfectly match, colors don't perfectly match, um, even if, you know, uh, maybe something else would look better there, um, as long as it's functional and works, then I think it's okay for me. Um, and so going into this year, I think I just want to be more mindful of what I have and using what I have and really challenge myself. Um, I think I really kind of, especially want to declutter the space I have because it's starting to feel cluttered. Um, and I think by using my stash, um, then I can help kind of declutter the space. I think this though also goes kind of beyond craft supplies and I think just in my home in my home environment um, like we live in a pretty small part apartment it's a little bigger than our last apartment like we have a second bedroom now which we use as the office um, but it's very easy for things to um, become overwhelming um, and really cluttered and um, so I think I just want to be mindful of like what's taking up space in my apartment and what's being functional and before I buy more things thinking about if something else serves a purpose as well as like how functional it is and how much use I'm gonna get out of it um I think beyond the apartment it also goes for me is clothes um so I think the hard thing for me is because I'm sick my weight changes quite a bit um, so I fluctuate a lot so I'm often going through clothes pretty fast um, and like I do kind of donate them um, but it becomes uh, 
it becomes hard like always having to buy clothes like even like I have a pretty small wardrobe like I I don't have a lot of clothes I just have a lot of basics but it's still it still becomes a lot having to like when your size is your size changes drastically um so I I want to be I guess more mindful of that maybe thinking about clothes that have good stretch to them or that'll last um that's another thing is I tend to buy fast fashion I know it's not great um but unfortunately it's just like what's most accessible so kind of maybe if I need something, like really researching the clothes um, to see what it's made of, to make sure that it is going to last and like not just physically last, um, but also last uh, in terms of if I lose or gain more weight from my health. Other things I'm kind of thinking about, but maybe less concrete, although this has been all very abstract. Um, are one the areas of relationships and two is the area of mental well-being um so relationships i um again it's like a two-way street so like for me i don't have a lot of control over things i think i can be more mindful with relationships and trying to schedule things and check in on people and kind of foster those relationships but again i don't have a lot of control over it so I think I'll do my best to be a little bit more mindful of the people in my life and reaching out to them. But again, not getting caught up if I feel like this isn't something that improves already because, you know, I I also feel like my relationships are pretty solid as is. Um, so I don't necessarily think it's something I need to grow, but it's still something I want to be mindful of in the new year. It's not something I want to neglect. I think something else when it comes to this, though, is being present with others. Um, so when I am spending time with others, just making sure I'm present with them. I think what's hard sometimes, again, with having a chronic illness is ener like managing my energy levels. And so it can be really hard socially with being present with others. Um, just because I'm just trying to stay awake. Um, so again, this might, in order to be present, again, this might have to go back to really listening to my body and what it needs. Um, you know, when it comes to especially social things, as well as work, it can be really hard for me to say no to things. Um, even if I'm not feeling well, if I do, I feel a lot of guilt. Um, so I just, I think, again, go back to listen to my body and what it needs in that moment. Um, and I think that'll kind of help me move my, set me up in future years for success. And lastly is mental well-being. And so this one I'm kind of struggling with to... My thoughts, my intentions, my hopes for the year when it comes to this category, again, because I feel like it's something so tied to everything else going on and something I have so little control over. Um, you know, I feel like one, it's tied heavily to my men my physical health. So I'm chronically ill. If I feel awful, I'm also gonna feel awful mentally um, because, you know, it's going to be hard to sleep. It's going to be hard to feel energized. It's going to be hard to socialize and work. And so it impacts me in so many ways, including mentally. And so it's something I feel like I have very little control over. And especially, like, not just in the sense of when I feel bad, but there's also, like, for example, like some side effects of medications I'm on, which affect me mentally. And that's something I think I've been struggling with. For a little while um so that also makes it hard because it feels like it's something i don't have control over and so i don't really know how to you know be intentional when it comes to mental well-being i think maybe the best thing i could do is one be a little bit more compassionate towards myself that it is something i don't have control over and maybe that'll help a bit as well as 
in some way just getting support when it's needed so I don't think I need necessarily support right now um, but I think being mindful of when I do need support and when I do need to intervene I think I really like the idea of actually um, you know being compassionate towards myself especially when it comes to these kind of intentions I've set out for 2023 and why I didn't want to set out specific goals is um, I you know I think I tend to one be a perfectionist and then also over plan in a sense like be unrealistic with my goals um and so for 2023 i feel like maybe it's best just to be mindful of what's going on and be in the moment and not worry about trying to accomplish a whole bunch of things especially when i don't have control for over them and you know maybe this looks like just as i said living in the moment listening to my body and what it needs and being flexible um and by recognizing i don't have control over things i think that is one one step i'm making to being more compassionate towards myself um, because I'm recognizing that, you know, if things don't improve, if things get worse, that is not something I necessarily have control over. It's something outside of me. And, you know, I think that really fits with my word of the year, rest, as I was saying. And, um, you know, as I said, I'm burnt out. I spent the last few years, I don't know year and a half, two years, whatever, being sick. And so I really, I really just want to relax. I really just want a moment to catch my breath, to be in the moment, to be present with others, to have fun again. So I think this is it for my spread for New Year's. Um, I added some washi tape down here just because I didn't pick up any um, washi tape. It is quite a lot <laughs> with the uh, bougie boxes, but I think that's okay because as I said, I'm not putting things on top of it. It'll kind of stay like this. Um, maybe I shouldn't have done the leopard washi, but um, oh well. I I still, I still like it overall, um, even though it's a lot to look at. Um, but yeah, so this is the um, my final spread um, for 2022, um, and next will be 2023. Um, so if you've stayed this long, thank you for watching. Um, you know, if you also kind of feel the similar way with goals, just being over them and wanting to move forward, please leave a comment. Um, if you have any like tips or anything resonated with you also, please feel free to leave a comment. Um, I love, you know, building connections. This is why I do this. Um, so I'd love to get to know you if you're here watching. Um, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.